and good afternoon YouTube community guys and girls it's your boy Lex Anderson situation corner and you've entered the sports opinion log this video like all my videos is sponsored by my hair company at celebrityhaircore.com check us out online and on the gram at celebrity hair core for the promo codes to help you save even more on our grade 10a diamond level virgin human hair bundles pay no tax and free shipping DHL Express over the 50 states of the USA all right you know what it is yesterday the sports opinion log and special guests we were in the building in Yankee Stadium in the Cathedral and guess what we being the Yankee universe hashtag Yankee universe were all the difference that the Yankees needed in dumping the Minnesota Twins last night 14 to 1 uh, where do we start? Okay, Tanaka, six and two-thirds innings, giving up three hits, one earned run, and five Ks. But the bats were alive last night. Miguel and Dujar, he homered. Juan Carlos Stanton, who I've bashed so often, he came through in my presence with a monstrous 435-foot solo shot. I believe the exit velocity was between 116 and 119 miles per hour. Yeah, he brought the thunder. Well, no, actually, he brought the pain. It was more like Didi Gregorius, Sir Didi, with a grand slam. Tyler Auster, Tyler Austin homered as well. And our prize prospect, Galeber Torres, got his first hit. So, shout out, no, excuse me, a tip of the cap. And a salute to the Yankee universe, which the goal is now and forever to always represent pinstripe pride. And the goal to always bring a championship over to the Bronx and the citizens of this great New York City. All right, now it's time to switch over. And so here we are, Laker Nation, legendary Kobe Bryant. And I'm pulling out the number eight today. For this video segment you know why because legends and you know you know what it is you know where I got to get started OKC versus the Utah Jazz let's just get this over with final score 113 to 96 you could tell by halftime this game was over <sighs> okay where do we start with all right let's go Mello, 5 for 18 0 for 6 from 3 point range for 11 points Playoff P, 9 for 21, 2 for 9 from 3-point range for 32 points. And Westbrook, 7 of 18, 0 for 3 from 3-point range for 23 points, 14 rebounds, and only 3 measly assists. The Battle of the Big Men, Gobert, 16 points. Steven Adams, 9 points. Well, Westbrook kept his in. He held Rubio the former European child prodigy to 16 points. But once again, super rookie Donovan Mitchell goes off for 33 points, becoming the first, the second, excuse me, Utah Jazz rookie since Carl Malone to have 30 plus points in a playoff game. You know, beyond words, like I've bashed OKC up and down all during the regular season. I'm doing it in the postseason. I'm reading on the BR on the BR that there's talks of because of Westbrook's antics, there might be a suspension for the next game. Might as well suspend them. Get it over with. I don't want to see him on the floor as OKC gets eliminated. Westbrook is a biatch. He's chippy. He's selfish. He's in love with himself and his arrogance is leading OKC to the downfall. And here I, the prophet, will declare and proclaim that after this season, win or lose, Paul George, Melo, they're going to try to find a way out of there as soon as possible. Clearly, we could go through the former teammates of Westbrook and see how they become successful. Well, we'll see what happens regarding Durant and the Spurs tonight. That's another story. But Durant does have a chip. Which more than says enough, says enough. I might, let's face it, folks. This is the Westbrook that still lost to the finals to LeBron and the Miami Heat. This is still the same Westbrook that with Durant blew the 3-1 lead against the Spurs, against the Warriors, excuse me, what, two to three seasons ago. This guy's a dud. He's spectacular for the regular season, but clearly Westbrook 
is it made for the playoffs or the postseason? You're holding down Ricky Rubio, but yet Donovan Mitchell is torching your team once again. You're once again not getting your teammates involved once again. You're shooting all these hapless shots once again. You're getting chippy and trying to get into Gobert's face. Like, he does too much. He has to be in love with himself. Maybe it's the Mountain Dew commercials. Maybe it's his skinny jeans. Maybe it's his tight-ass t-shirts or the t-shirts with too many rips in them. But clearly his focus isn't on being a leader and helping his team secure a win. Now, I could bash Carmelo Anthony, which I've done when he was with the Knicks. Thankfully, they got rid of him, but the Knicks is a franchise. They suck anyway, so it doesn't matter. But we can we stop with the talk about Melo being top five or in the top 20 NBA scoring? This guy is a bum. He is a lame. And again, he's not a leader. He's not going to give you defensive pressure, which he's a liability on. And clearly, he's not being aggressive to say, you know what? I've got you guys. I'm going to try to score 25 or more points. No, those would be the players on the Utah Jazz who are doing that. People like Ingles. Oh, man. Well, Gobert had 16. But the point is, is that when it comes time for the playoffs, you're supposed to be adding plus 5 to plus 10 points to whatever you did in the regular season, which is why the Warriors are in the spot that they're in currently. But we'll get back to that later. So, OKC... I had put them in six. It looks like the Jazz will probably be eliminating them at home since they did steal home court. So just just go away. Just go away. I'm done with OKC. The, the less I can talk about them, the better, because there's nothing positive to say. But I do have one last thing. They might be a big three in terms of all-stars, but when it comes to superstars, next level, zero superstars on OKC. You heard it here first. Subscribe and share. <laughs> okay, and what do we have? Uh, Cavs versus Pacers. Series tied at two. Again, I've talked about it. Lance Stevenson is a clown. He's selfish. People talk about hardcore defenders. No, he just likes the media attention that he gets when he gets tangled up with LeBron because it's still a tied series. And in the Cavs win, 104 to 100, let's look at the box score. You don't need highlights. Lance Stevenson, 11 points, 5 for 11 from the field, 1 from 4 for three, from 3-point three range. So what is he doing? He's just being a clown. People are showing, I'm seeing all these Lance Stevenson highlight clips. What? Like, has he hit a game winner? Is he doing anything viable? I had picked for the Cavs to win in 5. The Pacers have what it takes to eliminate LeBron and his weakened Cavs team, but they just can't take advantage of it. It's, like, pathetic. Like, you watch these teams unfold and you watch these teams play and it's like damn the NBA markets their players collectively as the best in the world and then you see OKC with a trash ass performance like they've been having since the ball tipped in game one and then you look at the Pacers who have the parts but mentally they just can't get over themselves to claim that W but speaking of claiming a W Raptors, Wizards, I had, again, put the Raptors in six. The series is tied at two. Final score of the last game, 106-98. John Wall and Beal combined for 58 points to tie the series, even though Bradley Beal was missing for the last five to six minutes because he fouled out due to erroneous calls by the referees, which is horrible. We'll get into that in one minute. But uh, what do we have here? Uh, did you know, did you know that the Wizards have won eight straight home games, but they've also lost eight straight road games. So, catch 22, court between a rock and a hard place. What are the Wizards going to do? Can they win on the road? That's what made Jordan so famous. Six championships. He won four of them, I believe. Yes, I believe he won four of them on the road. If you can't be a road warrior, there's no postseason glory, especially if you don't have that home court advantage for that game seven. I can't stand Drake. He's been talking his ish, which has set off John Wall. As they say, it's friendly. But of course it's going to be friendly because they're millionaires. They're not going to really do anything to each other, right? They're not going to hurt each other. Just like the fake fight with OKC and the Utah Jazz. Millionaires aren't going to fight one another. These guys are well paid. If you want to see a fight, go back to Malice in the Palace. YouTube it if you want to see a fight because that's as good as it's going to get. And what else do we have here? Excuse me, sorry. 
Okay, yeah, Rockets versus Timberwolves. Rockets lead 3-1, final score on that, 119-100. to The Rockets dropped 50 points in the third quarter. That was crazy. And, uh, you know, the Timberwolves, they'll be on their way out. You don't even have to worry about that. But uh, I'm still not going to buy into the beard and CP0 because, again, CP0, CP3, commercialized dudes, Harden, the Allstate commercials, can they get to the conference finals? So, you know, one game doesn't make a series, but four games make a series. And speaking of games and series, tonight we have a bunch of game fives on the line. Bucks versus Celtics, series tied at two apiece. Sixers versus Heat, I look forward. Sixers are up 3-1, by the way. So I look forward to the Sixers. You heard it here first. The prophet proclaiming, declaring, decreeing that super rookie Ben Simmons will be showing all ass Dwayne Wade and the crying Hassan Whiteside. He'll be showing them the door tonight when him and Embiid do what they do best. And that's put on a spectacular scoring show. There will be a lot of blocks. And Dwayne Wade will be packing his bags and going home. Good, good. And then we have the Warriors versus the Spurs. That series is 3-1. Fake all-star Draymond Green, Klay Thompson, Swaggy P were no-shows. Will they step up tonight? Coach Pop will not be there. The Spurs are playing with emotion. They're playing for their coach. So let's see what happens. Uh, but, I, you know, I look for the Warriors to handle their business and put the game away. Durant's doing his day. Had 34 points the last game. But I expect more. Why can't the why aren't the Warriors dropping 40 and 40 between Clay and Durant the way Drew Holiday and AD were doing? But we'll see, right? That game is on later tonight. So speaking of tonight, time for me to head on out of here. I'll probably be back here later tonight with a wrap-up. Or you can see me first thing tomorrow. But to make sure you stay in the know, do the right thing and press that subscribe button right there to your right. Come back, drop a thumbs up, and if you want to leave a comment, check out my Facebook page at the Sports Opinion Log, or follow me on Twitter at Mr. Fifth Avenue, hashtag TST. I'll catch you guys and girls later on the other side of the sports arena. This is your boy Lex Anderson, doing what I do best, popping my collar, because I'm signing out. And it's your boy Lex Anderson, Sports Opinion Log, here with the lovely, beautiful... Angie. Yankee fan. I, I would say number one, but I'm with her. So she's Yankee fan her. number one, her Angie, and I am Yankee fan 1A. Thank you for having me here. You're welcome. We are in the building. Happy belated birthday. Thank you so very much. She is just the best. We've had a great time out here. As you see, we are in the bowels of the cathedral here in Yankee Stadium. And we're going to bring no, it in no, a little bit closer. No, no, it's fire. The stairs over there, too. Yeah, there are stairs. There are stairs over there. So the Yankees are doing their thing. What's the score now? Like five one or something like that? Oh my God, horrible! We're horrible Yankee fans right now. <laughs> actually, we, actually, it doesn't matter. Miguel. Five and, or six ball? What is it? What is that? Either so. way, we are blowing them out. Miguel and Dujar, Juan Carlos Stanton have hit home runs. Our presence, I would think. Yes. Led Juan Carlos Stanton to homer in the Bronx. In Yankee Stadium, where before his batting average was as well he should point be. He one should zero three. Yes, he came to the Bronx for something, right? That's championships, baby. That's what we're about. Lex Anderson, Angie. invited by special guest Angie. Baba Boom, Mi Amor. Thank you, best for the people. All right, we will catch you guys and girls on the other side later.